Following the final withdrawal from Afghanistan, President Joe Biden pushed back against corporate media in an incredibly strong speech and earned some interesting praise from someone that is unexpected. So now first, I, I want to show you a snippet of the speech that he made yesterday, uh, and because I think it's important to the context, and then I want to get to the reaction. Take a look. This decision about Afghanistan is not just about Afghanistan. It's about ending an era of major military operations to remake other countries. When I was running for president, I made a commitment to the American people that I would end this war. Today, I've honored that commitment. It was time to be honest with the American people again. We no longer had a clear purpose in an open-ended mission in Afghanistan. After 20 years of war in Afghanistan, I refused to send another generation of America's sons and daughters to fight a war that should have ended long ago. What have we lost as a consequence in terms of opportunities? I refuse to continue the war that was no longer in the service of the vital national interest of our people. And most of all, after 800,000 Americans serving Afghanistan, I've traveled that whole country, brave and honorable service. After 20,744 American servicemen and women injured, and the loss of 2,461 American personnel, including 13 lives, lost just this week. I refuse to open another decade of warfare in Afghanistan. Now look, uh, out of the gate, pretty strong speech. A pretty strong rebuke of corporate media and their, of course, uh, lust for war. And so I, I like that. I, I want to see more of that kind of Biden. In fact, here's what he also said. Well, I take responsibility for the decision. Now, some say we should have started mass evacuation sooner. And couldn't this have been done in a more orderly manner? I respectfully disagree. So basically, Biden is he's out of fucks. And he just basically told in the nicest way possible, in the most politician way, he told the media to go pound sand. Uh, I, and that's interesting. So now the White House did not expect the media to turn on him on that issue. But again, when it comes to war, the media is massively pro-war. And so it did. Uh, and most Republicans, by the way, most Republicans, they also turned on this. Because first of all, when Trump proposed this, leaving Afghanistan, they're like, ah, Trump, yeah! Woo, leave Afghanistan, yeah, let's do it. And now... Now that it's Joe Biden, well, how dare you leave the country for the Taliban? How dare you leave Afghanistan? We should be there for another 20 years, not 50 years, no, 100 years. No, you know, they were going to take over anyway. One Republican, however, has deviated from the path. So now that is, uh, and, and this, is, this is sad, it's literally the worst person you know. And Coulter. And Coulter. Here's what she tweeted. Thank you, President Biden, for keeping a promise Trump made, but then abandoned when he got to office. Oof. She added, Trump repeatedly demanded that we bring our soldiers home, but only President Biden had the balls to do it. Here are a few of Trump's wuss BS. I mean masterful tweets and by the way um she shared a couple of them i'm gonna share more so you know let me uh let me just go and and, and get that up here in a second so that's a that's a bunch of trump's masterful tweets there oh we should leave afghanistan immediately we shouldn't, we shouldn't go back rebuild the u.s first time to get out of afghanistan we're building roads and schools for people that hate us it's not in our national interest. Afghanistan is a total disaster. We don't know what we're doing. We've wasted an enormous amount of blood and treasure in Afghanistan. The government has had zero appreciation. Let's get out. Don't allow our stupid leaders, very stupid leaders, to sign a deal that keeps us in Afghanistan through 2024. 
but that all costs by USA make America great. On and on and on. You, you get the point, right? So, you know, uh, heartbreaking. And I say heartbreaking, again, because that's the worst person you know. Uh, but also, she's right. You know, broken clocks, right? Oof. Donald Trump has also, by the way, come out against Joe Biden uh, on this. I want to show you here, this is a video from uh, his rally last week in Coleman, Alabama. Take a look. Biden failed totally on the pandemic, and he's now overseeing the greatest foreign policy humiliation in the history of the United States of America. This is the greatest humiliation I've ever seen. Biden's botched exit in Afghanistan is the most astonishing display of gross incompetence by a nation's leader, perhaps at any time that anybody's ever seen. Name another situation like this. Vietnam looks like a masterclass in strategy compared to Joe Biden's catastrophe. And it didn't have to happen. All he had to do is leave the soldiers there until everything's out. Our citizens, our weapons. Then you bomb the hell out of the bases. We have five bases. And you say, bye-bye. This will go down as one of the great military defeats of all time. And it did not have to happen that way. This is not a withdrawal. This was a total surrender. This surrender for no reason. Oh, let's just get out and then bomb all of our bases. You realize, like, you're going to bomb places that the Taliban now has. So that means you're going to bomb the Taliban and get us back into another war. But, oh, no, it didn't have to happen this way. What, what, okay, what? No, here's the thing. This is basically the only way. There's no clear, clean withdrawal from a place like this. This had happened under Donald Trump. It would have happened the same way. But, you know, here's the thing. Trump didn't have a plan. Remember when we waited for his terrific, phenomenal, and fantastic new health care plan? Yeah, it didn't happen. Why? Because he didn't have one. And he didn't have a real plan for preventing a Taliban takeover of Afghanistan either. Nobody did. Nobody had a plan. It would have always went this way, perhaps worse, because you never would have known with Donald Trump. So it's a nice bit of hypocrisy. And that's really what this is. Now, the one thing that I can actually give uh, Ann Coulter some credit for, and skiing that just kind of makes my skin crawl, I'm not going to lie about that. She's consistent. Look, she hates brown people, but she is honest about it. <laughs> I mean, she's, she's not doing what the other Republicans are doing and suddenly pretending to care about the poor innocent Afghans, right, in order to score political points against Democrats. No, no, she is still always an unabashed white nationalist. And she, again, still hates brown people, will be railing against bringing in Afghan immigrants, which I think is the number one thing that we should be doing right now, is bringing in as many Afghan immigrants uh, and refugees as we can to get them away from the Taliban. Uh, but, you know, what's refreshing about this is that at least you know the monster you're dealing with, and they're being honest about being who they are. So... Whereas, of course, Tucker Carlson, by the way, Tucker Carlson plays a monster on TV to be rich. I think they're both awful people, and I think Car Tucker Carlson's actually worse. Why? Because he probably doesn't even believe half the stuff that he's actually saying. But he does, he says it, because he knows who butters his bread. That makes him, I think, even worse than Ann Coulter, which who, on occasion, is actually sometimes right, again, on occasion, and even shows a little bit of principle. That's hard to find on the right, almost impossible. Now, if you'll excuse me, after this segment, I am, uh, I'm gonna need a shower. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share with your friends. You can subscribe and help out the channel by becoming a patron, it's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf, or you can become a channel member as well by hitting the join button below.